Hi, welcome to Ranger Country. I'm Peter. And I'm Lauren. And we're here today to bring you honest reviews of shooting equipment and rifles. Now today we're bringing you a review of the new Remington T-Rex, both in rifle form and full put guys. Fairly new to the market, Lawrence. Yep. Um, I know since we've been stocking them, they've been hugely popular. And I mean hugely popular. It's a... Uh, Almost can't get them past now. Yeah, yeah, it's been, been quite a surprise for us. And well, we might find out why in this video. So let's see what it's got. Yeah, absolutely, let's get into it. Okay, so let's get straight on to it, Lance, and see what features these are, these two rifles have yep, for us. Absolutely. So obviously we're starting off with the rifle length, the rifle version here. They come with synthetic stock. You've got a rubber butt plate at the back here, nicely padded, and you've got this, got this green little uh, little band here. That sort of matches this little flash at the down the side here as well, doesn't it? Yeah, hundred percent. Nice little touch. Mm -hmm. uh, moving forward, you've got an adjustable stock here, obviously adjustable cheek piece. Um, the adjustability on it is very, very good. There's quite a lot of movement up and down. It's on a single little two and a half mil Allen key, uh, I believe it is, on the on the right hand side there. Um, you just lift it up, set Not it. Not many rifles at this sort of price point, at this sort of starter rifle budget, would have a fun feature like that, would it? No, no 100%. It's a brilliant little thing to have. And some people would never use it, but I do notice that you that might come in really handy because you've got peep through sights uh, scope rings there, haven't you? Yeah. Um, which makes the, the scope quite high. Yes. Uh, but we'll come to that in a minute. We're, we're still at the back end there. With uh, a, lot, a lot of people probably wouldn't use it, wouldn't, wouldn't realise it was there. But we'll come to it in a minute how that could be quite handy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, moving forward, obviously synthetic stock. It's nicely contoured, but obviously we'll get into subjective handling in a little while. Moving forward, we've got a bolt action. The last few guns that we've done, the last few rifles that we've done, have all been uh, side levers. And we've noticed a trend towards more side levers nowadays. Well, that's funny because the bolt put version is a side lever. Mm, okay. Maybe. So, yeah, we'll pull that out in a minute. Yeah. So this bolt action is very, very good. It's phenomenal. It feels just like centerfire rifle. So something big. It right feels, there. looks, yeah. and sounds just like like a 308 rifle, bullet firing yeah. rifle. Which, it's, that, it's that solid with a bit of meat behind it, you, yeah. you feel, don't you? As you, as you draw that bolt back. Yeah. yeah. But it's it's smooth. It's not like you can. Mm. Oh, it's hard to describe. It's hard to describe. You can you can feel that there, that there's some resistance to it, but it's it's smooth all the way through, um, and the way the way the bolt is shaped, it's uh, yeah, very very nice, very nice nice action on there. Now, as you do that, just cock that rifle again. One little thing that I noticed while you were shooting it, just close close the bolt up. We've got a little cocking indicator at the back here. I don't know if the top camera can see that. So. When it's cocked, that little not your hand anyway. No, probably not. That uh, little what is it? A little stubby bit comes out the back with a little red band on it. And I'll just fire that off. I know that I know the gun's empty. Disappears. It's uh, that's very cool. We'll that's... get we'll get a, we can get a still of it later if the we can. Show it. Just a nice little touch for a, a starter budget rifle. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, moving upwards. Uh, the scope rail is a Weaver uh, Picatinny rail up top. Um, it's a bit strange to have on a on a. It's a bit non-standard to have on a on a rifle of this sort of price range, but it is tactical. A lot of guns are going more tactical, go for the more Weaver style nowadays. So it's yeah, it's, it is what it is. Obviously, you'd be able to get night vision or anything that sort of thing straight mm. onto it if you wanted to. Yeah. Now I mentioned with the I mentioned briefly a few minutes ago the the the, the peep through sights. Now these they're quite high and they've got an opening there underneath the underneath the scope. 
So you can actually use, or you should be able to use, do you just try it? The open sides. You Why can. Why have you got a scope on? Yep, you 100% can. You can either have open sides there, or you can lift up to the scope there. Best of both worlds. Now, that's, they're both fibre optic as well, aren't they? Yep. Which is, I mean, if, if you were, if you were ratting at short distance. No, that back one isn't fibre optic, it's painted green. Oh, is it? Mm. The front one is, though. Okay. Okay, you're still going to see the, um, yeah, the, the different colours. Short range ratting, you wouldn't have to just, just scope. You no. just look through on your, on your yeah. peep sights. You could have your open sights. scope zero for 30 yards and your open sight zero for 10 yards or something. How many rifles think of that? Astonishing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Safety catch. We've got a little safety catch underneath here. Again, feels very center fiery. It's big, it's easy to use. It's a nice solid click. Um, obviously, a right handed person will take it off with their trigger finger and they'll have to put it on with that other hand. Like so. It's a very nice place for it. Obviously, while you're on the trigger, you can be flick it off, ready for your shot, and you're away. Nice little, nice uh, placement for it, nice little design, and works very, very well. Mm, yeah. Now, the rifle comes with the um, this 3 to 40 scope with the the weaver mounts and the with a, with a, with a peep-through mounts, doesn't it? Yeah. I know in uh, Zero, well, we were both playing about with it a little bit earlier on, weren't we? And uh, it shot surprisingly well. Yeah. Let's just hope you can do that when the... Uh, yeah, 100%. When we do the shooting. Probably won't. You might. You might find better with the, uh, the open side. <laughs> so, moving forward from there, we've got, we spoke about the, the open sights there. So it's a, adjustable for... Um, windage and elevation. Wind, that's the words I was looking Left for. Left and right, and up and down. Yeah, absolutely. Um, little fibre optic sight on the front. Now, the, the fibre optic sight, that's got an open section with a... Um, open section at the top and the back's open and the front's open now what they do they, they pick up the light going into the tube from the top and it seems to i mean it doesn't magnify it in any way but it appears to light up when you look down down it because it's it's picking up the the ambient light it worked very very well yeah they're, they're they're a game changer it's in the old days you know you'd have to put a Probably in the, before the days of Tipex, even. I don't know how long Tipex has been out, but I suppose we had it at school. Those rich kids, they had it, and we, we just scribbled our, out our words. You'd, you'd put a little dot, dot of Tipex on your front sight and on your, on your rear sight, and that, that helped. But we've gone all modern here, and high tech, and fiber optic. And what a difference it makes. Yeah, 100%. So we've got this uh, this cylinder here that goes from what's that 18 inches long, something like that, about 450 mil, roughly. Don't quote me on this um, for your air cylinder. Um, now they say 250 bar maximum fill, and it is regulated. Uh, we, we we only topped up 200, didn't we? Yeah. What have we had? Uh, probably six, seven magazines full playing playing with it today. Yeah. Um, and we are about one eighty, I think it was. Yeah, we're 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 probably down halfway through the green. Now it is a nice. We'll we'll get a still of this in uh, a bit later on. Nice gauge, color coded gauge again. So we've got yellow is needs refilling. Green is good. Red too high. So yeah, that's nice. And then you've got a dust cover on this rotary. You'd call it a rotary dust cover, I guess, wouldn't you? Yeah. Covering the fill port. You can spin it, hide it, hide the fill fill port when you don't need it, and then yeah. spin it around and you fill it. That's, a very, that's it. a very smooth. Have you mentioned about the moderated shroud? No, I haven't. Yeah, sure. So no, obviously, haven't. the thing that you see here is not the barrel itself. Inside here is the barrel. This is a shroud, and what this and the silencer on the end does is quiet it down. Now, you can't get an, an, uh, an additional silencer, but it is very, very quiet. 
obviously when we were in testing, we're inside an enclosed area and it's very, very quiet. Mm. But which, especially at this sort of price range, is I think we, we, we keep coming back to this, don't we? This, this price point of this rifle, it's, is there anything cheaper? Maybe just, but not, not a patch on the quality. But it'd be the basic, basic Chinese yeah. stuff. Yeah. Absolutely, very basic, yeah. Yeah. As Lawrence said, that there's no facility on the front to screw on a, a, an aftermarket moderator either. So it is what it is. And yeah, I think it's very good. Last thing. It's surprisingly good. Surprisingly. We've got a uh, weaver rail underneath here, a uh, Piccadilly uh, bipod rail. So you can either have a, if you have your bipod on there, um, I have noticed there is a little hole in the back here. So you could screw in a sling stud. And a hole there. Interesting. There we go. So we yeah. could have sling mounts on it. So you could have you could have a sling and you could have a bipod on it straight from the get go. Which again is that would save all that sweating of not wanting to slip with the drill and uh, you know, we are just about to drill you a nice walnut stock and it's you know sweating profusely and it takes away all guesswork. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. Definitely. I would say this is a brilliant little hunting rifle. But also not, I mean, it's not out of place on here, on the range. Uh, big shot count. I think it's about 150 ish, 150, 200. It's hard to get exact to. figures for it, but yeah. from our experience of what, what we've experienced today, I, I think that's where you'd be looking, wouldn't you? Yeah. Now, I say it is regulated and it does come with a rifle, a steel rifle barrel. So, I mean, it certainly performed very well. I mean, we, we didn't even clean this, did we, before we shot it? Straight out of the box. Straight out of the yeah. box, put the scope on, zero it, and it was absolutely banging and straight in. Yeah. Which was very surprising for you. Next change. <laughs> so, magazine. Do you want to just uh, give a quick demo of the magazine while I I will just put this one to one side? Yeah. So the magazine is 10 round. Uh, both calibers, I believe, we've only got the 2.2 here, but it's certainly 10 round in the 2.2. Um, what you do to load it is spin this face plate all the way around to roughly there, in that position there. And then there's a set of grooves in the middle of the center ring that spins. What you do is spin that all the way around, a couple of hands on it, and here you go. Once it's, once it's round all the way, it's under a lot of spring tension. Put your finger behind through the hole there. I don't know how well the camera will be able to see. Put your finger behind, drop your first pellet into there, and then that will hold itself there. So you don't have to hold it in there. Stop the screen. Have we seen a design like this of magazines? When I first saw it, I was expecting it to be like the like the Corral mags yeah. and the other... Rotate the carrier inside. Yeah, that's it, where you, you spin that yeah. face plate section all the way around. Yeah. First one, and go, first one goes in backwards, and you go from there. But the, the whole entire faceplate comes around and you you, you load up that centre ring mm. annually. Makes it much easier to get pellets out if you've messed up, put them in backwards. That's a, or... that's a very good point. Yeah. You want to change your pellets, you, you find in the first few shots they're going everywhere. You're not getting on with those pellets, take them out, try another one. Yeah, yeah. So actually a very clever solution uh, and it fits nicely. It fits nice and snugly uh into the into the rifle there's no click or anything but it pushes in till it bottoms out and then it, it the contours of the magazine i don't know i don't know how well the cameras will be able to pick that up but it's uh it's sort of dished out here and that fits perfectly with the side of the action so it's perfectly straight line once the magazine is which is also a very very clever little design it says these 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 budget rifles that they, they are coming on in absolute le leaps and bounds, aren't they? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Now we've also got it's it's little brother, little brother. Yeah, I'd have thought so. We uh, all right to use that phrase. Um, it's the bullpup version. Now it's quite a bit shorter. Get them both in shot. Yeah. Now we 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 mentioned that this one is a side lever action. Mm -hmm. Very, very nice side lever action as well. When I first saw these in the shop, the ball pop, saw the ball pop ones first, um, I was 
massively surprised, massively pleasantly surprised with the with the the, the side leader on this. It's very very smooth. There's no raunchiness or anything to that. I think that's a brilliant little thing. Another yeah. little win, same as I like the bolt action on the rifle. Yeah. Now you've got a much smaller cylinder on this one. Um, it's probably we well, haven't had the stock off, so we don't. It's probably a little bit longer, but it is narrower, so your shot count is going to be lower on the um, on the bullpup version. Again, regulated. Um, magazine is, is at the back there, magazine aperture. Weaver rail again, moulded into the moulded into the action there, into the, the, the part of the stop there, and a a fixed moderator on the barrel. It's, yeah. There's a bit of bit of a barrel exposed there, and then a mod moderator on the end. Very, very quiet to shoot there. we yeah. we've we've only dry fired this one. We have actually sold out. And this is our last last bond that is going to a customer, so quite happy to display it, but we're not going to shoot it. Um, similar cross cross bolt safety on there, isn't it? Yep, works just the same. Yep, Obviously, very put, positive. Put it on with your left hand to pick it up and be back. Yeah, very positive, and same scope as well. Now you don't have open sights on this one, do you? No, you don't have open sights. You don't have the adjustable stop, uh, no. the adjustable cheek piece. No, but it's yes. a lot shorter. Yeah, it is. It is a lot shorter. Now, I don't know if everybody watching is familiar with ball pups. If they've shot ball pups before, you do hear the hammer and you do hear the action. And we've, we've had a few people say, I can hear it. I don't like it. Yeah, obviously, as you, when you get the rifle up into your shoulder, your, your cheek is resting on it. Your listening lugs are right near it where the magic happens. Your listening lugs. Your li yeah, that's it. That's Came up with that phrase. Um, so obviously you're going to be able to hear things a lot louder yeah. in terms of the inner workings than a rifle, which is away from the But saying that, we've had people say this with a Daystate Delta Wolf. We've had people say this with a Daystate Pulsar. Pulsars used to make a little wang. Yeah. yeah. What else have we had it? We've had it with everything. And it is... It, it, it's it's no fault of the rifle at, at all. It's it's the design because it's there. It's it's right on your was it listening look? Yeah. yeah. So you may hear it. So you know, but just an observation. It has got the same green accents on the butt plate and on the mm. on the action. Yeah. Well, now interesting. Oh. That looks like that could well be. Uh, you could be able to change that side lever. Look. Yeah. The, so it's possible. I'm not saying it, it will, but it, it does look like it's. Uh, Unfortunately, these are that new that we don't have too much uh, sort of technical information on them just at the minute. Yeah. Yeah. But it looks like it could be interchangeable. Same as on the on the rifle, actually. I don't know it? if it will. I don't know if it will. You know, with the rifles, I know with with Air Arms Day State and whatever, there is a a lug in the bottom that you have to not move to a different. Some manufacturers, you you need a different either a different bolt or a, a different carrier for the left and the right hand. It's where the bolt parks. Mm -hmm. But that's just a just a bit of the technical side inside. That, that does make the difference of why you can't. I know some people on a like an Air Arms S400, S410, they, they swap it out to the left and it's still in the up position where it's locked down. So, you know, they, they, they try and turn the bolt over on a, on a right-handed gun and it's still, you know, pull it down to, to unlock it and lift it up to lock it, which yeah. doesn't really work. Not, not like a dedicated, Left hander. Yeah. Just going off on the point a little bit, but uh, mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. Anything else to say before we move into handling? I'd like to have shot it. So let's get the scales out and see how they measure up. Yeah. So the handling of these rifles, Lawrence. Yeah. They're very, very light, aren't they? One thing I've noticed. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that's the beauty of synthetic. Um, 
lightweight materials used used throughout. The weight of the rifle. Yep. Now, I think figures that that the manufacturer, the, the distributor, the importer provides is generous, hopeful. Yeah, three point one kilos they give, don't they? Mm -hmm. Our scales say two and a half kilos with scope, which is how many pounds? Six something. Two and a half times two point two. I've just been from memory from when I weighed it. Yeah. Something like something, something like that. Two and a half kilos. You can feel it. Yeah. Uh, and the Sco that's with scope. Yeah. Yeah, which is very very light. And the ballpark is one point, should have been allegedly 2.2 .2 kilos. We've got it as 1.9 kilos without scope. Yeah. It's okay. more like 2.2, 2.1 kilos with the scope sort of thing. Yeah. Very light. Yeah. You, you could carry either of these round on a permission quite happily, not get tired, could you? Yeah. Not, not even know you've not even know you've got it. And that's on top of the sling stuff. Has this one got sling stuff? No, it doesn't. No. No. But then it's shorter. It, it doesn't need it as much. No. No. Speaking of shorter, allegedly 78 centimetres. In real world, it's 83 with an actual tape measure in the ballpark. And uh, what's the alleged for this one is 104. Is that right? I no, believe so. Right. Yes. Yeah. Um, that, that was right. They got that right, didn't they? Okay. They got that one right. One, yeah. One out of four in the numbers. Isn't too bad. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's 104 centimetres, which is still sort of an average length. Um, yeah, it's not not a long rifle, I wouldn't have said. But you can't change that by taking the moderator off because it doesn't come off. No. So that is that is fixed length. Yeah. Yeah. Now you have to just bear in mind your case, the case that you're putting it in. You have got your fibre optic at the front there. So bear in mind you're going to need a um, be a bit delicate with that fibre optic. Don't break it off. Yeah. So. I mean, we've we, we've said light, haven't we? Yeah. So very light. Now, so what the rain way? Don't know. Numbers off the top of my head. We're getting there. It's pro probably similar. Yeah. We're, we're... This is this is better balanced, maybe. Um, there's the front end is very very light, and there's a decent amount of weight on in the middle here, so it feels very very well balanced mm. around the. Round of that pistol grip there. Mm. I would say subjective. That feels very, very nice. Yeah. I mean, the rifle certainly isn't heavy, is it? You, you know, we could describe that as heavy. No, that is uh, just a, just a tad heavier than the than the ball pull. But what yeah. I would say in terms of length of pull on the ball pull, uh, in terms of stock length from the butt to the trigger. Um, it's a little bit shorter. It's probably sort of standard for a bullpup. A uh, little bit shorter than the rifle is. Um, so, I mean, it's a lightweight rifle with a shorter uh, length of pull. So you could probably go away with it for kids. That again in the rifle is is a little bit shorter as well. You'd absolutely get away with that for for teaching young kids to shoot, mm. getting them into it, and then having it for hunting rifle as well. Yeah. Is it worth just mentioning while we're uh, while we're talking about rifles for for kids and teaching them to shoot that we had a bit of a law change, didn't we? In um, in July, I know Dave wrote about it in one of the magazines uh, that you have to prevent access to your air rifles by under eighteen persons, and you are legally responsible now. Okay, so that that's just worth 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 mentioning. I know a lot of people do buy do buy rifles for for the kids. I mean, I had a rifle when I was when I was when I was a child, and you certainly did, didn't you? You had the yeah. I bet it didn't have the green though, because it was all black and white. Oh, very good. <laughs> it was all black. There was no white apart from the little bits of tipex on the uh, yeah on the sides. If you could afford tipex, if not, it's a bit of double white paint. Yeah. But no, it's uh yeah, I ideal junior, obviously under a adult supervision. Um, yeah, I mean obviously we get we get asked a lot quite a lot in the shop saying uh, I want to rifle for myself, but I want my young lad, young daughter to to have a go as well, and these would be brilliant for that. Yeah, and uh, when did you start shooting? Can you remember? 
No. Was it like 11, 15 years ago, was it? I don't think so. I think he was younger. Was it? Mm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, younger. Okay. But I know you didn't have the strength, did you? So, you you know, you a lightweight rifle would have been... I can't even remember what it had in those days, to be honest. But, yeah. Yeah, anyway. So that's numbers and subjective. Anything else that we've missed? Probably. Probably probably quite a lot. Yeah. Are we yeah. about ready to get shooting? Go on. Well, shooting the rifle, because we can't shoot the bullpup. Yeah. Let's see how you can perform. Probably not very well. Let's get into it. <laughs> Righto, let's see what uh, Lawrence can do with the the Remington T Rex. Now for the shooting we're using the um the rifle version. We can't use the bullpup because we've sold it and that's the customer. So we can, uh, quite happy to, to display it. Um, but don't worry, we won't be shooting customer's guns, so. I'm not going to talk too much during the shooting. Because I don't want to give Lawrence too much ammunition for excuses for his poor shooting. I was waiting on your, your bated breath there. I'll Were you? For your next word. So that's that's why you got a six o'clock shot, wasn't it? Yeah, that's so. it. Now we were playing around with these rifles, well, this rifle earlier on, and if I say it was astonishing what it what it was delivering, um, it was better than what Lawrence is performing now. But we'll do the whole magazine. We'll see exactly what it's uh, what it's capable of. That was me that time. Was it? Well, apart from the other times, but that's the one that was very <laughs> clearly me. Times. Bullseye, that one. Was that your last shot? Are you counting? I was not counting, That's but it. that was my last shot. Now, I saved the best till last there, didn't you? Yeah, I want to keep everyone on their toes. Did you? Okay. Now, I say this was astonishing in, in setup. Lawrence was shooting it, and Lawrence was shooting it because I'm an old guy with old eyes. Don't get on too well with the... This is a 3 to 9 by 40 standard scope on it. 25 yards. I struggle a little bit with the with the focus, being able to, to, to focus it in. I don't like wearing glasses, and I find for these scopes, you've got to have your glasses on to, to get it all into focus. You'll find that in a few years' time. So, so Mr. Young Eyes here has, has um, drawn the short straw for the shooting. Um, I mean, I was going to say for the rifle, that's pretty, I was going to say for you, that's pretty good. But con especially considering the rifle, um, you know, you've got one outside the green there. And let's just bear in mind that that's a 17 centimetre target. And I know I've said before that on our monitor here, I've measured it. And it is, it's actually 30 centimetres, that's a foot foot long, that, that target. It's a foot square on our screen. So that makes it. It's almost twice as twice the size that it actually is in real life, isn't it? Yeah, it makes it look much, much, much worse. It does, yeah. So we will get the range in country pound coin, uh, probably a two pound coin in this instance to, to, to check that out. We'll check the safe, see if we've got a two pound coin. Has our budget gone up for a two pound coin? I might have to borrow one yeah, if okay. I can't find one. Yeah. Speak for the bank. Yeah. Um, <coughs> astonishing. Price point. 
Absolutely. Yeah, hundred percent. It was it was doing it was a lot more consistent, or I was a lot more consistent in in zeroing in practicing uh, with cameras off. I don't know if that's because the cameras are now on. It the group opens up. Or... I said a lot of it is up here, isn't it? One yeah. or lost in the mind. It will do those uh, those those same whole groupings. Uh, obviously, we're putting some through the centre and some on that bottom right. It will do that every single time. It's just now when we're setting up, we didn't have cameras on, did we? Like you said, yeah. and I had a spotting scope, and I was watching him, and I was speechless. They were they were touching. It was it was same they were. whole group. Yeah, Tw twenty five yards, just the standard three to nine to forty scope. Couldn't yeah. believe it, and you know we. We're known on here for telling it as, as it is. We're not salespeople. We're um... obviously we do have a shop, but we don't want to. Yeah, we would be very quickly out of business if we sold a bunch of crap and said it was really, really good. Yeah, we would. Yeah, we 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 prefer somebody to buy it and say you you were damn right. It is really, really good. Um. Then somebody said, I'm a bit disappointed in this. I'm not getting the best results that, uh, that uh, I'm expect I was expecting. And that's always disappointing, isn't it, for anybody? When they've when they're spent the hard earned money, you know, it's uh, you want a good experience out of your shooting and you want enjoyment out of it. That's what it, we're all in it for. So, 100%. Yeah. So let's go to the, uh, to the roundup. Now, let's get straight into the summary. What do we make of this rifle, or these rifles, Lawrence? I was, when we first got these, new rifle from Remington, we're used to, oh, there's a new rifle this week, oh, there's a new rifle this week, oh, there's a new rifle this week. We're kind of used to them being a bit samey, but these are not that. These are not samey. The action feels well above its price range. It's nice that it feels like a centerfire rifle. It comes with open sights as a little bonus. It's got fully shrouded barrel. Uh, it's got the adjustable stock. It's got loads of features that you would not expect on a not too expensive rifle. I think what did it for me was the shooting performance. Yeah. I think that was, you used this word earlier, astonishing. And I don't think that's, understating it for the price point of this rifle for where it's aimed at in the market yeah it's brilliant now it's the the the, sh the shooting that i did on camera was not as good as when i was zeroing it no pressure cameras on whatever you want to call it me being crap whatever you want to call it um we believe in don't we but when I, when I was doing when I was doing my job, it was putting them through the same hole. Sort of, it was a sort of fingernail grouping, that sort of thing. I will actually, yeah, I, I will actually say he is right. And I was watching through a spotting scope, and my mouth was open, and I said, "Really? Is it really doing that with this three to nine by forty non AO, so non adjustable objective scope, and?" can't adjust the ocular either on these and he was performing that well or the gun was performing that well i won't big you up too much i would say it would be you would it would be more consistent to get that accuracy with a uh upgraded scope i but think it'd be scope awesome it. scope scopes included so and at that price yeah yeah, yeah. it's regulated it it's it's accurate it you've got a good shot count it's light. It feels nice as well. It doesn't feel plasticky or tacky or anything. No, it doesn't. It doesn't creak. It doesn't wobble. Yeah, it's a nice, pleasant surprise. Astonishing to shoot. Very, very nice. Comfortable. Don't know what else more there is to say. I don't think there is anything else, to be honest. So, give one a go. Get your hands on one. Yeah. See absolutely. what you think. And, uh, yeah. Well, that's it from us. Yeah. Please like and subscribe. Thank you very much. Down here somewhere, I think. And uh, see you in the next video. Thank you.